in reverse order, we're going back to the stock hydraulic cooler. Obviously, since we've already modified this tractor, uh, we're mounting it slightly differently, but it's, it's in the same spot. It's just that um, I have it upside down. I have the hoses going into the, the same locations, but again, they are upside down. I could do another test with a different one series tractor with a factory setup, but I think this is a more accurate test. I don't believe this is gonna make a material difference. So this is how we're gonna go for it. Um, same test as previous. This is a cold tractor, same temp outside, a little over, right at 40 actually. Got my squeeze apparatus here and the tractors sat overnight outside. Uh, let's see if we, uh, I lost one of the U-bolts. That's one of my, I don't know if you've noticed in the last video, the hood's a little bit wonky, but uh, we are going to See if we can get it to lope. That was kind of cool. Oh. <laughs> Wouldn't quite do it. may have something to do with uh, this tester. Let it warm up just a bit. Some fluid flowing. Make sure I don't have any leaks. I'll run this at uh ah. Good latch. Goes over to the side. Relive, at least my headlight. Let me go down over there. I feel like it's my back to my high school car. Works, just everything's a little bit off. All right, let's get a little bit of. Uh... Oh, that's interesting. on the same way. I think that seems to be all the way down. Should be. Should feel warm. But I don't know why this gauge is Oh. oh, okay. Hang on. I don't know what happened. I did have a, uh, after I, uh, <laughs> after I did the test the other day, I had this back here and it was out of the way, but then it fell into here and you can see it's kind of upset. Let me uh, get a new gauge. All right, fresh gauge. Let's see how she goes. Yeah. One thing to notice, a lot of people wonder about, I've heard people ask this question. Of course, the tractor's at idle right now, but there's no pressure in this uh in the circuit at all when you're not doing any work so 
if you go to wide open throttle, you might see that needle move up a little bit, but it's not going to move up until you do any substantial work. All right. Let's, uh, well, hang on. Get up to our 2,000 RPM. Running around at a 26, I think. Well, that's all it's going to give us on this one. Maybe that the uh, come on, ah. I did more than one handed. may read a little bit differently I guess I don't know if that other gauge I think it was reading 2650 or something like that so uh, we're gonna go with this and uh, I didn't take an initial reading but I don't know what time it is but whatever time it is I'm gonna come back at four about 84 degrees Come back in 15 minutes, see how we're going. Uh, let me make sure. About 20. So I'm going to rev it up a little bit to see if we get more pressure. Oh, uh, it would appear that that's the full amount. We'll do more than one test, but. I think this is close enough for what we, uh, to get a baseline. Back at 15. Uh, we started at 11.34, it is now 11.49, so we are right at the 15 minute mark. One forty-five, one forty-six. So, oh wow, that's about twenty-five degrees hotter at fifteen minutes, and that's about the max. I want to say it was about one fifty. I have to go back and look at a at a rabbit hour. So, we are heating up much much quicker, and uh, we're not fighting off the the heat. Looks like we've. Uh, lost about a hundred psi just because that happens when it heats up but we'll see if that goes down more as we get into uh, some hotter temps but we got to set it up this is two days later uh, it's the exact same tractor same temperature and the difference is the swap out of the Hydro's Plus Cooler versus the stock one. We are one minute shy of 30 minutes. Woo. One ninety three. I just checked the video. At 30 minutes with the Hydro's Plus Cooler, it was at 129, 130. So we are effectively uh, at 60 degrees, almost 65 degrees warmer at the same time. So this test may be just about over. I don't know that uh, I'll let it go up to uh, maybe... 210 if it gets that high it may not go higher you never know we've lost uh, about 200 psi when you get up to that kind of heat you're going to lose your uh your fluid's ability to, to push or squeeze however you want to look at it it's not doing any work at this point that's why it's why it's heating up 
do have a very small drip here somewhere. Ow, that is hot. Let's see. Uh, my coffee from yesterday. Engine temp, about the same as yesterday, I think. Or not yesterday, but the day before. Two thousand RPMs. I'm in 195, 196. All right, well, I'm gonna check it probably. I made that video, but I'll check it at five or 10 more minutes, make sure we're not doing anything crazy and uh, see what happens. I checked it five minutes more. It was 206 in climbing. Yeah. 215, I'm gonna call it. So, at 40 minutes, we're at 215 degrees with the stock cooler. At 50 minutes, uh, with the Hydros Plus cooler, we we're at 140-ish. I think it's 140, 141. So, what, 60, 75, whew, 75 degrees difference? Now, I don't know exactly how this translates, meaning if the ambient temp was 100 degrees, would it make a huge difference? We'll do that test, but um, I don't think it's gonna make a material difference because we're squeezing the fluid here, and that is artificially creating so much heat that the ambient temp, I don't know, that makes a big difference. It might make a difference on how quickly you get to, uh, so if your fluid at startup is 40 degrees versus 80 degrees, but if you're just talking about the overall temp, I suspect it won't make a material difference. We'll see. We'll make that, uh, we'll, we'll do that test. But as it sits right now, uh, clear and significant uh, increase in performance with the Hydros Plus version of the cooler. Uh, more to come. Hope this is informational. I, I've got enough information for myself at this point based on the install that I am going to go ahead and make a bulk order and put these out for pre-order uh, and make an official install video. So reach out to me if this is uh, if you have questions or think it's something that uh, you're interested in. So, this is Captain's Log Supplemental. Uh, I went ahead and put the cooler, uh, the Hydros Plus Cooler Plus back on because one of the things that, as I was doing the test for the stock cooler, one of the things that was odd is I'd tightened this all the way down. It only got until 20, 500 where yesterday I had the different bro what is now broken not yesterday two days ago uh, I put on what was now a broken pressure gauge because it got into the wheel and didn't look that broken but if you looked at it it was like cocked to the side I remember I was driving and I heard da -da 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 -da, and I looked back and I saw it but externally it seemed like it was okay um, but that's why when it first started at the front of the video uh, it only got to like maybe five or six hundred psi. So this was a brand new gauge and it gave me a slightly different reading. And so the other gauge that went up to 2750. And so I thought that's what I had my pressure 
uh, gauge set to. But when I put this gauge on, it only went to 2,500 and I had this tightened down completely. So it just made me skeptical. And my thought was, and I don't know if that will tighten completely off, but I was with the other one going all the way up to 215 degrees. I thought, well, that's a big gap. And while I will do more tests, I wanted to make sure this first one, because I'll report it out to everybody, is going to be somewhat uh, well, pretty close. Like if we do another test and we get it and it's, you know, five or 10 degrees, okay. But if we do another test and they're actually, well, I'd say five or 10 degrees different than this test. If we did another test and both of the coolers were within maybe 20 degrees, because right now the spread is 70, over 75 degrees. So with what I just ran here, and, and I just ran it straight up to 40 minutes. Uh, of course, there's an airplane going over. I did it for 40 minutes, just like I did the previous one. This was at 140, and the other one was at 215. So that's 60, 75 degrees. Um, that is a big spread. Not, uh, not necessarily surprising. I didn't know exactly what to expect. I mean, the, the cooler is a whole lot bigger. But I just wanted to make sure that it, that with what happened in the morning, with the change of the gauge and the fact that I tightened this down, because I was when I tightened it down on the original test, I was able to back it off just a bit to get us down to like 25, 26. And um, it just made me wonder if I was actually giving a little more squeeze to the stock test versus this test. Now, when I started with this test, all I did was I changed the gauge back. Uh, not the gauge, the cooler back. I started it up. I didn't even change the RPMs because I left it on the one before. I didn't change this because it was exactly the same setting, which is tight as it'll go. And we went for 40 minutes. We got about 139, 140. We got 215 on the stock setup. So uh, I'm feeling pretty confident about this um, result. And by the way, two things. One, I actually did come out and check at about 30 minutes and it was about 138 to 140 40 minutes it was still 138 to 140 so that could be the top based on how we had the test set up obviously that's not with a hydrostatic but if that was with like a constant running over the the pressure relief valve it's not going to get much hotter than that it's about as hot as you can get uh the other thing i would say what was the other thing i was going to say uh, oh, when I started this was almost directly after the previous one. So the the temperature of the fluid starting out was like a hundred, like one hundred four, because that's just how much it had cooled off. Uh, I started this test for the stock one. The fluid was around forty degrees. So um, yeah, that that makes me fairly confident that we are. Uh, getting a at least directionally a, a very good result something that is um, significant and I know that some people have some concerns around the battery I've got more to say about that because I've been able to change this out funny enough I'm not going to try to spin it that this actually makes it easier to change the battery but once you install this which it's a little bit more effort obviously uh, when you need to change the battery, you can pop this out and, and out the battery comes. And taking this out was very, very simple. More simple than taking one of these headlights off. So, uh, you know, I'm not trying to spin it. I'm just gonna say that in this configuration, this isn't gonna be the final one. We're gonna have different hoses that come around in slightly different way, but it will be very easy to take out if you so choose. All right, that's really it. Questions, comments, leave them below and thanks for watching.